My name is Zenzi Natasha Avasis. I'm a geologist by profession, with just over 16 years experience in the mining industry of Namibia. I'm the founding president of the Women in Mining Association of Namibia, and I'm currently the vice president of the Association of Women in Mining in Namibia, in Africa. Correction. I now consult on gender and governance in the mining industry, as well as mineral exploration. And I'm the proud owner of a coffee shop that bears my name. When we started the Women in Mining movement in Namibia, often I was asked, why is it so important to achieve gender equality? Or they would say to me, much to my annoyance really, if it is not broken, why are you trying to fix it? And the one that really got to me was when a male colleague of mine said to me, Zenzi, as an African man, I do not understand why you are trying to fight for gender equality. This one really, really got to me because he was nearly in his mid-30s. Not an old Ndala. <laughs> he was in his mid-30s. And here's the other catch. We studied together to enter the smiling industry. So I asked him, so, so when we were studying together to become earth scientists in the mining industry, did you see me as an African woman or as a future colleague in the mining industry? He kept quiet for a bit and I said, here's my card, I will teach you about that a bit later on. But it's also then that I decided that you know, I will make it my mission in life to turn my boys into an invoice and teach on the importance of gender of why we must achieve gender equality. They say that if you were to ask a Greek of the time of Socrates, what is the greatest war of history? They would probably, and with most certainty, mention the Trojan War. This was a war between the Greeks and the city of Troy, and this war lasted for about 10 years. And it finally ended when the Greeks retreated from the camp and left behind a large wooden horse outside the gates of Troy. Inside Troy, there were many debates of whether we should in bring in this, this horse or not, um, because this horse was left as a gift, supposed gift. The plan for this wooden horse was to end, the, for the Greeks to end the war. And the wooden horse, though, was designed to be hollow in the middle so that the Greek soldiers could hide inside. And then it was wheeled in front of the city. And after the Trojan horse was left there, eventually the horse was laid inside. The, um, because the Trojans thought it was a gift that would bring them fortune, they parted. Like, well, it was in the 1100s. The Greeks left behind a double agent. And his mission was to convince the Trojans that the Greeks have left, bring in the horse, let's celebrate, and ultimately this will give the Trojans a fortune. However, once night fell and they were tired of partying, the horse was brought in, it was opened up, and out came the Greek soldiers. From the inside of the city, the Greeks were able to destroy the city of Troy and win the war eventually. Ladies and gentlemen, gender equality is much like a city under siege, like, the, like Troy was. And concepts such as sexism, toxic masculinity, and patriarchal oppressions are like the Trojan horse. These are the known enemies. So sexism, toxic masculinity, and patriarchal oppression are the known enemies to gender equality. It's often um, addressed, openly addressed, and it's kept at bay, and, we, and it is being addressed. Many governments and organizations, especially those in industries which are previously dominated um, mostly by males, have launched aggressive campaigns on trying to achieve gender equality. These efforts place emphasis on the importance of gender diversity and gender inclusion in our quest to achieve gender equality. So because of these efforts, these enemies are quickly losing ground. And there is no doubt that there is progress, but it is painfully slow. So if these enemies are losing ground, 
Why is it then that the known enemies are, shrink, are not shrinking? The progress is slow because there is an enemy within. Now before I unmask this devious enemy within the walls of gender equality, let's look at some of the damage caused by the known, um, by the enemy that we know. The efforts of raise awareness on gender diversity and to a certain extent gender inclusion resulted in a higher percentage of females at the entry level of, 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 um, of our careers. Which basically means we are seeing more women entering the labor force, especially in sectors that were traditionally occupied by men, of which I'm a perfect example. I'm a geologist in an industry, so my career was basically known as, you don't see women there. But because of these efforts, I was one of those who, could, who was brought in here, that's gender diversity. But it's, most, it's very important to realize that just because you're seeing more women around you, it does not mean that you've achieved gender equality. As the pipeline progresses, we consistently see lower representations of females with very few management and executive, at, at executive um, directorship and senior management. And that's where I want to bring your attention to. This here is what we call the proverbial glass ceiling. Personally, this is the wall I was staring at when I left the mining industry, well, full time employment in the mining industry two years ago. This is the glass ceiling that needs to be broken, or so we think. This is the part that we need, when I say we, I'm talking about us females. This is the part where we need to be, and I'll tell you why. Because this is where decision making takes place. This is where the benefit of gender diversity is realized on condition that it is coupled with gender inclusion. That is when we will have achieved gender equality. Now the leaky pipeline, as we call it, demonstrates that gender diversity alone does not mean that equality has been achieved. Diversity is important, but inclusion is crucial. Now the leaky pipeline showed us that most industries are more diverse, isn't it? but do not place, unfortunately, enough emphasis on inclusion. And if you look at the definition of you and women for equality, it basically means, simply put, that economic implications of not achieving equality are quite significant. And we need to achieve gender equality as a matter of urgency. If I were to tell you that last night I got home and I found that the motor gate of my Gate, the motor gate was broken. I struggled to open the gate, and when I was about to give up, I saw my gardener come to my assistance and open the gate for me. I thanked my gardener and drove in, hoping that my housekeeper had cooked because I was really exhausted. Imagine walking into my house to find that the dinner was not prepared. Stop. How many of you thought that my gardener was a man? <laughs> How many of you thought that my housekeeper was a woman? But I did not tell you what gender they were. Yeah. Unconscious bias is defined as a social stereotype about certain groups of people that we form outside of our own conscious mind. In other words, how we, how a person thinks can depend on their own life experiences. And sometimes they have beliefs and views about other people that might not be right or reasonable. This means that they could make a decision influenced by false beliefs or assumptions. Sometimes this is called stereotyping. Unconscious bias is mostly encouraged by deeply entrenched cultural and so so social norms. And it has a dire consequence that dwarfs the efforts of gender diversity and inclusion. The real enemy within is unconscious bias and it has dire consequences. And here's the new splash. We are all guilty of it. I've just demonstrated it. And I said all, both genders, male and female. So why then, if we are all guilty of it, do we perceive that the enemy to achieve gender, achieving gender equality is patriarchy? Consider this. The reality is 
that women are less likely to hold leadership and managerial positions in professions that are especially densely populated by male. One consequence of unconscious bias um, with us females is Queen Beism. Beatrice. <laughs> Queen Beism, it really isn't our fault. It is a response to the negative stereotypes and discrimination women encounter at the workplace. In an ideal world, women could easily support each other at work. However, through impl implicit gender bias, some of us engage in queen beeism and fail to support other women in their field. Why? Because we hyper-compete and bully each other because we see the other as a threat. We want to protect the position as, I am the first female geologist. I am the first female hoo-hoo to be out there. So we tear each other down by using slander and we gossip about each other and we stomp on each other. All this <laughs> because we're trying to crack that glass ceiling. Because we're trying to lean in. So if you are a queen bee, if you are a woman in leadership, it can be, it doesn't have to be a senior manager. It can be a supervisor, you have subordinates below you. And you describe yourself as more aggressive, more risk-taking, and competitive than your female subordinates. You physically and psychologically distance yourself from other women. I've had a case where somebody said to me, I have two boys, so I'm not interested in gender equality. Yeah. So by doing so, you reinforce the gender hierarchy by stereotyping other women. And you're denying that discrimination against women exists because you want to be seen as, I'm part of the boys. So by so doing, you are not supporting the efforts to fight gender equality. And the other thing is, once you've cracked that ceiling, you think you have arrived. And then you take on the promised land mentality and become super territorial of that space. Because you're thinking, I have arrived and I don't want to rock the boat. Let me demonstrate this with an example. It's a real life example. A few years ago, I attended a women's um, conference in South Africa. So I noticed that one of my colleagues were there, and she had been a senior manager for years um, at this particular workplace. And she was recent, at, at that point appointed as an executive committee member. However, none substantively. So I was very proud, and I ran to her, and I'm like, hey, congratulations, how do you feel? What are we going to do about this? She goes, do, do, do what? Because me, I'm quite happy that I got here. I'm not interested in non-substantive appointment. I'm not interested in all of that. I have arrived, she said to me. I was too shocked to respond, because here I am, a middle manager who's aspiring to one day become the CEO of the mine, and a senior lady says to me, I don't care. Newsflash, the ceiling is not made out of glass, ladies. It's a thick perspex, which has been hardened by the effects of unconscious bias. And you will need the joint efforts of your sisters, those below you, to crack it. You need to send the elevator down. That's the elevator that got you there. And if it's stuck, as it will sometimes, be, sometimes do because of unconscious bias, Use your angle to pull a sister up. The sad reality is that queen beeism is really bad for us. It decreases gender diversity in the workplace and creates barriers for all women to succeed in their careers. In other words, it limits gender diversity and inclusion, thus foiling the foundation upon which gender equality is supposed to be built. So how do we tackle this enemy within? How should we tackle it? Firstly, recognize the Trojan Wars and the enemy within. Remember that diversity alone does not mean that equality has been achieved. If we are to build the nations, both male and female needs to be equally represented for practical solutions that will serve society. Secondly, let us be cognizant of our biases. And this will require a complete paradigm shift from us all. Let's mentor each other, because mentorship allows us to empower and give others permission to achieve as much as you have, and perhaps more. 
especially reciprocal mentorship that allows for mutual beneficial relationship for both the mentor and mentee and allows us to develop sustainable relationships with social, political and environmental systems we participate in. Let's coach each, other, coach each other. It allows us to spot the potential in somebody else and help them to realize that potential. Let's inspire each other in, because inspir inspiring each other encourages us to push their limits and helps us to achieve greater exploits due to exemplary performance. I'd like to end this by giving you a quote that I really believe we need to achieve gender equality because the far-reaching effects of gender equality will impact not just nations, but can have impact or can have an impact continentally as well as globally. Let us stand together and tackle the enemy within by consciously and sustainably compacting unconscious bias. Thank you.